we'll go first for with a pacing strategy. Uh, typically speaking, if you're completing this on, on a 500 meter track, let's say you've got four laps to complete, I would recommend starting the first lap uh, quite fast. However, try not to go be the first in lead and everyone else is pacing off. Okay, um, try and be maybe second in place and just um, catch be a, in a more efficient manner by not taking on the full air resistance by um, being just behind the leader um, to make things a little bit more uh, easier on your end. But also you don't have the pressure of, of um, setting the pace. You can just work off the person who's in the lead and try and catch them towards the end of the race. In the middle two laps, laps two and three, I would recommend uh, focusing on your rhythm, uh, focusing on your breath, trying to stay calm. Uh, I think this is the middle two laps that people can either um, lose uh, focus of where they're at and what their time should be. Common mistakes that I uh, see when it comes to pacing would be people go way too hard early uh, for the first couple of laps and then drop off. The lactate kicks in uh, and they have no pacing strategy. They, they're just competing way too hard early and they go well above their capacity. Um, other ones is going pacing too much uh, and and starting too slow and then needing the last lap to be able to make up all this time and they simply just can't do it uh, and and they generally finish the race with a fair bit left in the take uh, and with obviously disappointment so you don't want to be either of those two going too hard or going too easy and overpacing it uh, it's somewhere in the middle um, is where we want to go start strong to set the tone first lap find your rhythm have some clear pacing strategies on what you're trying to maintain. Going into programming options, some common mistakes that I see with those that are really motivated to improve their 2K time trial, they go from running two, three times a week to running every day. And typically they'll be steady state runs, like going for 10K runs, 5K runs, 30 minutes, just continuous running pace. Uh, that is, not only is that not effective uh, running for your uh, football performance, which is most important. Everything we want to be doing is to improve your football performance. Um, and we don't want to put 2K time trial ahead of your football performance. So uh, don't get caught up in the test. Ultimately, the test is really there to uh, be able to individualize your training. What to do, we want to test. So 2K time trial, we want to prescribe off that 2K time trial, whether that be MAS, working out your maximum aerobic speed, the average speed that you ran at for that 2k time trial and programming your aerobic and threshold work off that whether it be having themes um, to your program so like i mentioned not just doing steady state running yes there's a place for improving your aerobic capacity with some longer runs like four minute three minute um, runs and some aerobic power work 90 seconds two minutes one minute efforts but we want to also work on our repeat speed so some shorter uh, distances like 15 seconds at a at a faster pace, and that's where you, you know, knowing your maximal speed can come in uh, into play. So we want to make sure that we've got themes to our workout. Like I mentioned before, you're not winging the workouts. There's progressions um, to your program, um, and there's themes to your session. So you might have an aerobic day, a repeat speed day, uh, and maybe a more anaerobic sort of lactate threshold uh, day to. Expose you. Why is 2K time trial important for Australian rules football? Well, as we know, it's the longest team sport uh, in the whole world. It's played on typically the biggest ovals, so biggest dimensions, so you're covering lots of space. Uh, there's more um, total distance of um, uh, covered, so including walking, jogging, running, sprinting uh, in Australian rules football, then things like soccer. Um, so we want to make sure that you're able to handle that volume of work. Plus, uh, for anyone that's completed a pre-season, you'll know that it's incredibly tough to be able to do back-to-back -back sessions of three sessions a week, um, plus potentially a fart leg or a heel session on the Saturday. So you need to be aerobically fit to be able to endure a pre-season uh, and mitigate yourself against injuries, be able to perform um, and back up high-quality sessions for your uh, development.